Robert Birch is a professional artist. He works in glass, metal, paint, and other materials. His art extends beyond traditional forms as he experiments and collaborates with different people across the globe. He's active in recreational activities such as rock climbing, skiing, snowboarding, skating, and surfing, among others. He often attends motorcycle rallies and tours the country, and he's built a tiny house. How much of your life is your art? And how much of your art is your life? Just like the, it's those kids that hop trains, you know. Just I don't know. There's just so many different varieties of life, and yeah, yeah. And I, this sort of ties in more with like the being a career artist in the 21st century now, because everything is can be documented so easily. I think how you live your life means as much as the art that you make, more or less. Like David Cho is a good example. He's like you know this badass graffiti artist. But he's insane. Like he's he's down there like riding tanks in Iraq and like yeah. you know banging porn stars and like all this crazy stuff. So it's like his artwork's cool, but his life is cool too. It's just like yeah. Hunter S. Thompson. Like his life as a composition is so crazy, and then his writing is good too. So to like have those two things like go together is I think very important. I think that's why you know definitely I spend time climbing up rocks or trying to whatever go backcountry snowboarding things like that like. Because you can't have crazy art, I don't think, and be, like, a boring person. Like, yeah. you can be brilliant in your own mind, and then, like, your work will sort of speak for itself in that way, but um, I think it's more... Because, you know, a, a rock star is an entertainer. Like, let's not, like, beat around the bush. Like, you're entertaining people. And why wouldn't... Your artwork's entertaining people, too, but I think your life, because you have more freedom, ultimately entertains people in the same way. So in a lot of ways, your life becomes the art piece, and the things that you make or do are become like the relics right. that you leave yeah, behind. Yeah, fucking deep. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, that's that's a beautiful way to look at it. I think that's exactly what we're looking for as far as what freelancers are today. I think 
or have always been like the beatnik generation or uh, totally uh, just the like nomadic people and, and vagabonds you know like people that are trying to make statements like Banksy and mm-hmm. like said David Cho those are all good people that I look up to too as well so. yeah it's it's romanticizing it like mm-hmm. you know the beatniks like yeah man they're just fucking driving around like doing speed like but it's romanticized in a way which you guys are doing too yeah. which kind of makes it more appealing to the masses craft is important and and so is the the fine art realm but i do think people prefer making the craft over the fine art it's just what they want because they enjoy the fine crafted objects and stuff totally but talent is abundant and like technical skill is abundant but it's just like every other thing like skateboarding or rock climbing you can make anyone like do do it you know like you can train someone to make a beautiful reddit show but like thinking now you have the tools like now you have the skill set now what happens next i think a lot of people just start spinning their wheels and making it in every color Mm -hmm. which pigeonholes glass is like a craft-based work whereas there's like only a few people that have broken out of that like william morris like martin chihuly and like josiah josiah and then like howard Bentre. you know like Mm -hmm. those people have pushed it to another like level where a lot of glass workers haven't so i like really admire that, that type of working style so like this isn't even like this is the stuff i'm talking about pedestal oriented work but i have stuff that's like seven feet tall and you know like i feel like there's you know the more like i'm in a small room like the bigger like space i get and the more like you know like it's just gonna keep going bigger and then like having people that care about you and like backers and stuff like that it's like the big fish in a big pond concept yeah like the bigger your environment the larger you can work totally so right now i'm in this small little like (laughs) you know fishbowl which is fine, you know, to, like, think think about things more. But the more I work with metal, the more I'm like, dude, like, there's so much. Like, mm-hmm. you can get so much crazier with this stuff. And mm-hmm. that's why, I'm, I mean, Martin's, you know, undeniably, like, amazing at putting that stuff on the huge scale because that is hard. It requires a lot more thinking than just popping off the punny and flattening the bottom and sticking yeah. it on the pedestal. And, like, yeah, maybe you got the fancy lines with the cane, but, like, man, think, think bigger. So I think that's, like, kind of what... I'm mean, aiming towards thinking like glass, glass wise, and it's a rad medium. But yeah. there's a lot of rad mediums. So then I, I just, uh, what did I do? I went to Europe for like four months, skate tour, and then went up to Sweden and was doing that thing up there with Ulrika. And I got back, and then I just drove my car here, and I taught high school here for like eight or nine months, and. Uh, at that same school. Were you sponsored a little bit for skating as well? Yeah, yeah, I still am, kind of. Yeah. I mean, it's not like a real skateboard company. I mean, it's like, cold bro. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, they flew me over to Spain, and it was like the best time. And so that happened, and then here I am. What are your goals for the, the future? Are you thinking about 
Moved to New York, you mentioned. Do you have like a five year plan or anything? No, I have two month plans. <laughs> two month plans? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to. A couple. I mean, I like. I want to keep helping the studio here get a little bit better. I want to go to New York because big fish, small pond, right? Mm-hmm. It's like carb meal's nice and everyone, like, you can be the best with very little effort. It's like the rec- recreation lifestyle is what's big here, you know, that's what's most important. And there's no sense of social service to that. Like, mm-hmm. it's inherently selfish. Sort of like being a career artist, like, in, in a way it's inherently selfish. So, uh, you know, finding social service type things to do I think is real, more important. Two month plans, man. <laughs> like, go to Seattle, come back, do a show here, and then like go to New York and like check it out. Sweet. And just go from there. Yeah, maybe this is an ordeal, but it's tight. <clears throat> Not pink pants. I think it's more of just a composition because like they're the same people in this repeatedly like my friends like Duncan he's like my best friend there's a picture of him being like when we went to high school together like so young like you know he's like you know we're like 15 16 and then at the very end it's still like the same people in it and then he he's like whatever 25 now so it's just like watching all these people you don't really know grow up through this book you know, if, if people actually paid attention enough through it, I think that would be, you know, this is just like a single piece of work. But it was really like hard to go through like thousands of pictures. And I'm pretty meticulous with keeping track of them. But, you know, having like a hard drive crash and like losing all these like memories sucks. So I wanted also to have it just like in hard copy form because, you know, when the electricity goes out for the whole world, <laughs> it'll be out of luck. That's cool. That's a lot along the same lines or similar lines of what we're trying to do. Um, like check back in with people like yeah. as they get older. Well, awesome. not, well, that but just document a lot of our like travels and, and different places that we go and, and try to bring like the reality of how people are living. You can see more of Robert's work on his website, robertbirchllc.com.